What's the most overpriced thing you've seen? Two years ago, while I was in Dubai, I stumbled upon a cell phone store in one of the malls there that had a range of phones that varied from $30,000 to $120,000. These were not just any phones, mind you. They were phones covered in diamonds and gold, the likes of which I had never seen before. Can you imagine spending a whopping $100,000 on something that's probably already obsolete by now? I mean, I get it, this is Dubai we're talking about here. It's a place where people drive supercars and hypercars that cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of dollars. But still, it's hard not to be amazed at the sheer extravagance of it all. Dubai is a city that's known for its opulence and luxury, so it's not surprising to hear about something like this. The place is a playground for the ultra-rich, and it's where you can find some of the most expensive cars, yachts, and properties in the world. I mean, it's not every day that you come across a mall that has a ski slope inside, right? So, while spending $100,000 on a diamond-studded phone might seem excessive to us mere mortal, it's just another day in the life of the super-rich in Dubai. Let me tell you about this ridiculous thing that happened a couple of years ago. Marks & Spencer Food, which is a high-end supermarket in the UK, decided to try something new and innovative. They tried selling cauliflower steak for £2.50. Now, at first glance, you might think that this sounds like a good idea, right? After all, cauliflower is healthy, and if it's sliced and cooked properly, it can taste pretty good too. But here's the thing, the cauliflower steak was literally just a thick slice of cauliflower that was covered in plastic. Yes, you read that right, plastic. And the kicker, you could literally buy a whole cauliflower in the same row a bit further down for just 40p. As you can imagine, the internet had a field day with this. Marks & Spencer Food was absolutely crucified for this ridiculous and overpriced product. People were mocking the supermarket left, right, and center, and it was honestly hilarious. I mean, who in their right mind would pay £2.50 for a slice of cauliflower that's covered in plastic when they could buy a whole one for 40p? The whole thing was just ridiculous. Oh man, I remember this. It was all over social media, and people couldn't stop laughing about it. It just goes to show how companies will try to take advantage of people's willingness to pay more for something that's marketed as premium or innovative. And let's not forget the infamous Whole Foods asparagus water incident. Three stalks of asparagus in a bottle of water for $6. It's amazing what some people will pay for just because they think it's fancy or healthy. The $700 Juicero. As if a Wi-Fi connecting juicer was even necessary, let alone worth the price point. I mean, seriously, who needs a juicer that connects to the internet? Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot about Juicero. Let me tell you a story, I used to work as a research chef, and my old boss was a bit of an idiot. He actually ordered one of these Juicero machines, even though they were known for being ridiculously overpriced. We had the machine for a few months, and then one day, a coworker showed him an article and video that demonstrated how you could get the same amount of juice by simply squeezing the pouches by hand. To make matters worse, my coworker then demonstrated it in person, right there in the kitchen. My boss just sighed and said fuck before dejectedly walking out of the kitchen. What a waste of money. I remember a nerdy collector's store nearby when I was about 10 years old, which was around 20 years ago. I used to love going there, even if I didn't buy anything. They had individual Pokemon cards in a glass cabinet, and their rarity was emphasized by their ridiculous prices. One that always caught my eye was the ancient Mew card. It had baffling illegible text, the whole card was shiny, and it was Mew, so it was amazing. The £150 price tag showed that this thing was so special. They had it displayed in its own velvet-lined box, and me and a couple of friends dreamt of owning that thing one day. For reference, the Charizard was £15. It turned out that the ancient Mew card was only a promotional card for Pokémon the movie 2000. I bought one due to sheer nostalgia on eBay a few years ago, still in its packet, for just £4. Wow, talk about achieving your childhood dreams. It's amazing to think about how much we valued certain things when we were younger. The practice of companies hiking the prices of products just because they slap a celebrity's name on it is a real issue. I remember going to Walmart to buy a new micro SD card for my Nintendo Switch. Before going to the store, I checked the price of the card online and it was listed as $35. But when I got to the store, I found the same brand and size of SD card in the game aisle, but for $45. I was confused and asked a store employee why the price was higher. The employee told me that the only difference was that the $45 card had a picture of Link from Breath of the Wild on the cardboard packaging. I was shocked and even three years later, I'm still angry about it. I totally understand your frustration. It's ridiculous how companies can get away with jacking up the price of a product just because of a celebrity's name or picture on the packaging. It's not like the product is any different or better just because of that. It's just a marketing ploy to make more money. To a consignment shop downtown and saw an oil painting of sheep grazing in a meadow with a price tag of $18,700. What made it even more outrageous was that the artist was unrecognized. 
When I asked the shopkeeper why it was priced so high, they simply replied, because someone will like it and buy it. I couldn't believe it. It's amazing how some people will pay such exorbitant prices for something just because they think it's valuable or because they want to show off their wealth. That's crazy. It really goes to show how subjective the value of art can be. What one person considers priceless, another may not even give a second glance. It's all about personal taste and perception. But in cases like this, it seems like the price is just inflated for the sake of inflating it. I remember when that I Am Rich app was a thing. It was basically just a red gem that cost $999.99. The app store eventually made the creator delete it, but at least he was upfront about what it was. I later found out that a similar app went free on Google Play for a day, so I downloaded it just for fun. I still have it on my phone to this day. Wow, that's ridiculous. It's hard to imagine anyone actually paying $999.99 for a useless app like that. But I guess some people have more money than sense. It's good that the app store took action to remove it, though. I once saw a snowmobile motor for sale for $4,000. What made it even more outrageous was that it wasn't even new, it was from the 90 seconds. But it's not just snowmobile motors that are overpriced. Boats and outboard motors are often sold together, with the motor costing $1,500 or more. It's ridiculous how the price can be so high just because it's part of a package deal. I completely agree. It's frustrating when you just need to buy a single component but have to pay an exorbitant price because it's bundled with something else. It seems like companies are taking advantage of consumers' need for certain products to make more money. The rising cost of insulin is a concerning issue that impacts the lives of millions of Americans living with diabetes. It's frustrating to see that a medication that was discovered over 100 years ago and can now be synthetically produced is still being sold for hundreds or thousands of dollars in many cases. It seems that the pharmaceutical companies are more interested in maximizing their profit margins rather than ensuring affordable access to life-saving medication. The situation is not limited to insulin alone. The cost of other diabetes management supplies like test strips and glucometers has also skyrocketed over the years, making it challenging for many people to manage their condition. It's concerning that a disease that affects so many people is not being addressed in a way that is both affordable and accessible for everyone. On one occasion, while browsing the aisles of a local grocery store, my attention was caught by a pair of scissors that were prominently displayed on a shelf. They appeared to be ordinary, with no remarkable features or adornments. However, upon examining the price tag affixed to them, I was taken aback by the exorbitant cost of $90. Intrigued by the steep price tag, I picked up the scissors to examine them more closely. Their handles were made of a high-quality material that provided a comfortable grip, and the blades were made of a sharp, durable metal that could easily cut through a variety of materials. Despite their impressive construction and functionality, I couldn't help but wonder why a seemingly unremarkable pair of scissors would command such a high price. Was it due to the brand name, or were there other factors at play? As a layperson, it's easy to underestimate the value of a pair of scissors. But as someone who frequents hair salons, you should know that hairstylists invest a lot of money in their tools of the trade. In fact, it's not uncommon for a hairstylist to pay upwards of $2,000 for a single pair of scissors. And it doesn't stop there, they have to pay to get them sharpened frequently as well. I remember one time when I was getting my hair cut and witnessed the sheer terror on my stylist's face as she dropped her scissors. I had never seen someone so upset about a tool before, but it was clear that those scissors were worth more than just their weight in gold to her. It really put into perspective just how much hair stylists invest in their craft, and how much we rely on their expertise to make us look and feel our best. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.